Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hinkley. Welcome to Triumph. I'm Michael Mann for Bike Social. And here we have the new Speed Triple 1200RR. And in this video, we're going to learn about all the details with Head of Brand Management, Miles Perkins, and Chief Engineer, Stuart Wood. Miles, thank you again for inviting us along. Thank you for showing off your wares. More than you welcome. Must More than be very welcome, proud. Michael. Look at these. They're some nice stunners, aren't they? So we've got this completely standard bike and we've got a few accessories on the white one. That's right, yes. Uh, the new RR Speed Triple. Very excited. Uh, the engineering and design team just couldn't wait for this to <laughs> come out. And we're not long after the RS, aren't we? What would it be, five or six months since that's been in dealerships? Yes, we launched that at the beginning of the year um, and that's uh, it's been very successful. Yeah. How's that sold? Have you got any figures that you can share? Um, yeah, we've shipped about, uh, uh, well, over 3,300, um, which in comparison with the previous S and RS generation is twice as many um, in terms of what we'd have sold in a full year. So okay. we consider that uh, to have gone down quite well and certainly generated lots of feedback from customers loving their new speeds. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, completely different, isn't it? And it's, it's certainly got a lot of um, positivity. Uh, from media as well. Um, but the RR, obviously there was a plan, there's been a plan for years for these type of models to come along. Uh, it, was, it was clearly always the plan to have it so close to the RS. Or perhaps just position the bike for us, would okay. you? Um, yes, so when we were developing the, or when the team were developing the RS, um, the RR was in the plan. Um, and the plan, of course, with, was, oh, as, you, as you know now, of course, was to bring the RS first um, in terms of Obviously, that's the, the, the core of that speed triple world, naked performance sports motorcycle for the road. Uh, and then the RR was planned to come out as, as we have now, uh, a few months later, half a, half a year or so later, to offer a new flavor. Mm. Um, and of course, the flavor with this one um, is, to, is to, uh, to give it a bit more focused riding position, more of a uh, performance sports bike for the road still. So with the RS, um, we feel that's pretty much always actually the speed triple's always been a road first uh, performance naked mm. um, rather than a track bike that's adapted or compromised for the road and this follows the same vein uh, which is to add then more beauty more style but also more of a sports performance focus so with the fairing the clip-ons um, but also the, the look so with a single headlight more of that kind of modern cafe racer kind of feel which for me, the Speed Triple is um, is a bit like the, you could call it the Hinkley Bonneville. <laughs> it's the sort of the talisman for modern triumph. And uh, this has been in the works for a long time. So from my side, I, I see everybody, it's no secret that sports bike sales are sort of like this, and yet naked sales are on the up. Yeah. And there's a lot of appetite for that. Well, of course, this is not a full fared thing. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, so it's a naked bike with a bit of cafe racer styling yeah. to it as well. Uh, and actually doesn't really have main direct rivals, does it? Because there's, there's a lot of power here. You've still got the, the same engine that you use in the RS. Yeah. There's a lot of technology, a lot of electronics, and it's, um, and it's, and it's I'm going to use the D word here, there's a, the Daytona. Uh, it, it would be remiss of it if I didn't ask the question. Yeah. Was there ever in the pipeline that you would do a full, a, a, you know, using this engine with a full fairing? I think the, um, not, not to evade your question so much, but it, the, the, the starting point for any motorcycle for us is what do people want uh, and also what, what, what do they want in terms to buy, mm. what will sell um, and in talking to customers and of course and also seeing uh, as you've already alluded to just where the weight of the market is um, in terms of people um, there's much more dominance of looking of riders looking for road bikes that have real riding capability for the road so first and foremost suits road riding suits the kind of world uh, uh, that, that isn't the track, mm. you know, that's, that's actually the real world around you. Um, and I think that bias towards real riding circumstances, but also in, certainly in the case of the standard speed triple, the more upright riding position, uh, the maneuverability, the manageability of that, and the performance, but performance that you can really exploit on the road. So in regards to the RR, if you follow that thinking, um, where the majority of people are looking for things to ride on the road and exploit 100% in road riding circumstances. 
I think it, it, the team saw it as a natural evolution to offer a flavor in the speed triple family that added some a, a little bit more practicality in terms of uh, high performance uh, road focused sports bikes. Mm -hmm. So the fairing does give you that, but also more of an engaged sports ride. So the, the Daytona uh, 765 and the Daytona world is, a, is really that's a track first, mm. or it's certainly a, a more of a track orientated sports bike. Um, and our, certainly the, the, the hearts and minds of customers would be they'd love to see one of those, but in terms of where the sales are and the majority of uh, uh, the, the sort of the practical, I want to ride a Triumph and what am I going to ride? Mm. This is the world um, that, that is really dominant. And also even in the racing world, you know, with the, with the development of the 765 in British Supersports and what will come in World Supersports, that's really the, 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 the sort of the direction of travel in that world. Mm -hmm. It gives the customer a really different option to what is available in the Triumph range currently, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's the, it's the most sporty Triumph there is. Yeah, uh, with that kind of capacity and that kind of level of power. Um, before we get into the technical side, Stuart, let me just ask you a few questions then about um, price, color range, availability, and also accessories. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind uh, just ticking those off. Sure. So in regards to price, um, the RR is seventeen nine fifty on the road. Now that's higher, of course, than the RS, and mm. you've got the choice between the two options now. But of course, what you get for that lift is not just this beautiful new styling and the more engaged and sort of sporty riding position, but also you get the kit. Mm. So the electronic suspension, the technology changes uh, with the bike and also uh, the, the tire, uh, the enhancement for the tire specs. Uh, in regard to accessories, yes, there are a few of the things fitted on here, but they're not representative actually of the full range. So what you can get is there's luggage mm -hmm. um, available in regards to a tank bag and a tail pack. Um, you also have um, uh, a, uh, accessories in regards to more practicality so you can get heated grips um, and also more styling uh, uh, and more technology functions that are more about the sort of the looks mm. and, the, and the elegance of the bike so this bike's fitted with the scrolling indicators front mm. and back uh, you've got the rear wheel uh, single-sided finisher on there uh, practical things like the tank pad mm -hmm. Um, so lots of little more, uh, little more detailed touches but I think the main principal difference is on the stock bike between the RS and the RR and you've got a pillion seat cover on this one, but you've got a pillion seat on that one. Are they, it, it, which one's standard? They're both standard. Ah, so, yeah. and actually on the RS as well. So what you get when you buy the bike is you get both the, uh, the pillion seat and also uh, um, the, the cover there. And you can just, you, you take this, uh, you've got a little, uh, uh, little detail pad cover yeah. here that you take off and then you can, you can key that out and swap the two over. And, you, and that's on the RS as well. Oh, okay. And is there a price difference between the two colours? Absolutely. So um, the price is 17,950, and that for that that's for the white, uh, the white bike with the uh, uh, with the graphite, but also this gold detailing, nice gold detailing oh, it's nice. got. Um, the red bike is another 250 pounds, uh, and that's for the the Karossi red option. So there's a, just a little bit of a step up. Um, obviously, though, the big difference in between the RS and the RR for that price difference is the high level of specification with the electronic suspension, the tires, and also you know, the, uh, the riding position, all the changes. Yeah. Um, in terms of availability, the, both options will be coming into the market sometime in January. I don't have the exact date yet, but that'll okay. come soon. I noticed as well, there's the gold line in the, in the, uh, across the tank, which is also represented, there's so a gold in the logo, and of course that's it right. matches the owners as well, which yeah. is very, very smart, and, and red, red on the red bike. That's right, and you get the silver, silver line detailing on this bike. Very smart. Miles, thank you for your time. Uh, we're going to get into the nitty gritty with all the technical details now and the advancements or the differences between the RS and the RR. Joining me now, Chief Engineer Stuart, Stuart Wood, thank you very much for having us along, Stuart. So the big difference between the two, other than this lovely, beautiful fairing, uh, I can see some electronic wires sticking out the top of the suspension there. It's a bit of a giveaway, right? Well, the, well, the, Sp the Speed Triple RR is fitted with the Olin Smart EC2 suspension system. That's a very fine suspension system. It's electronically adjustable and it's semi-active. Mm. So you can choose the mode that you want the suspension to, to work in, but you can also adjust that further by drilling through the menu system. When you say mode, you mean like riding mode, so the preset riding modes? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So when you select a riding mode, there is a preset that would suit that riding mode, but you can adjust that further. So for rain, road, sport or track, yep. you have a preset to suit. Uh, I see. And that's front suspension, rear suspension, and are there any other sort of parameters within the uh, electronics? 
Okay, well, yes, front and rear suspension is adjustable. Now, that's really important because the semi-active part of the suspension um, includes acceleration support, mm -hmm. cornering support, and braking support, right. okay? So you need to be able to adjust both ends of the bike to optimize that. Now, that is adjusted as you're entering a corner, as you're in a corner, and as you're driving out of a corner. So it's, it's a very complex system. It's uh, Olin's specific um, IP, very, very, very good, mm. works brilliantly, and really enhances the performance of the bike. What else is different on this compared to the RS? What else, uh, what else is different? Okay, well, you've, you've, you've mentioned the fairing, you've mentioned the light. That obviously gives you a glorious look. It's, it's more elegant. We've added style and elegance to the bike, but it also gives you that performance advantage of wind protection. It's brilliant mm. for longer distance riding or covering ground quickly, um, but also it fits perfectly with the ergonomics. So obviously, as always, the bike is designed as a whole to do a job. Um, the handlebars are 50 millimeters further forward, mm -hmm. 135 millimeters lower than on the Speed Triple RS. The foot pegs are, are higher by 14.7 millimeters, further back by 25.9 millimeters, and that's allowed us to move them slightly outwards as well. So when you're crawling over the bike, if you do take it on a track, it's just that much more usable. So it's much more of a sporty riding position with the, the pegs and the bars. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a sports position for the road. Right. Okay. Um, modern sports bikes are possibly too track focused for a lot of people to fully exploit on the road. And we wanted to design a bike that was road focused, that allowed people to use that sports performance they want where they actually ride. Speaking of performance, are there any of the engine changes from the RS to the RR? No, we've got the same, same engine, um, the same level of tune. 180 PS, 125 newton meters, with a huge spread of torque. Of course, yeah. It's a low inertia engine, fast pickup, really responsive, lighter than the previous generation. Everything's improved. And all that's where you need it, isn't it? In the middle, being a triple, you've got that big, big torque bit in the middle, and you've got that lovely bit of, you know, sort of linear power, haven't you? Right where you want it. Absolutely. Rather than screaming at, at the top end. Yeah, but it will also perform at the top end. Um, the new stack gearbox six-speed stack gearbox. It's a taller first gear than previously, mm -hmm. but slightly lower top gear. So you've got a closer ratio gearbox with the higher engine revs than the previous generation speed triple. That all fits perfectly. So it's just a lot more focused and, and a lot higher performance. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about that's, that's new on this particular bike? Okay, well, we've got the Pirelli Diablo Super Corsa SP V3 tyres now as standard. Right. They're a little more focused. They are very sporty tyre and they do enhance the agility and performance of the bike. Okay, brilliant. So it's, so it's going to be ideal on track though in that case. Uh, yes, it will. <laughs> and of course, you've got the My, My Triumph connectivity system that's fitted as standard. It allows you to access um, your, your phone, music, um, turn by turn navigation and, and uh, control your GoPro on, on the fly. So it's a really nice system, fitted as standard. Mm, fantastic. Wow, great bikes. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your time as well. So 17,950 for the white one, 250 pounds extra for the red one. In dealerships, we think around January time. Um, I'd be encouraging you to get a test ride booked ASAP because they're a striking looking motorcycle. Uh, in terms of rivals, I don't think anything else matches up to the specification or the power. I mean, you could, you could look at the possibly the Super Veloce or even the Ducati Super Sport, but um, I think these stand alone. All right, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for coming along. Any questions, queries, comments, leave them in the section below and we'll see you next time.